That area of South Africa is called the Wild Coast, and there's a lot of ships that have sunk around that area. And they, it's got major storms and major different uh, weather patterns. And so it was really stormy before we even left the dock. So we were definitely going out into stormy weather. I went to bed at about uh, half past nine in the evening. Then all of a sudden there was a deathly quiet and the lights went out. And I could feel the ship rolling, but I could, there was just deathly silence. And then one of the magicians banged on my door and said, you've got to get out now, the, we've lost power. and was sort of eerie because it's so quiet and yet the ship's moving, rolling from side to side and it's dark. She mobilized all of us and told us what to do because there were no officers as such that were telling us what to do. She told us not to tell anybody that we're sinking. At this point, she didn't even know we were sinking. She told us, just go and get everybody and say we're having a problem with the engines and that the power's got off and we need everybody in the main lounge. By half past 11, Lorraine had been to the bridge and they'd realized that there was no ways that we could save the ship. People are getting more worried. The people are nervous. We're having to split fathers from the mothers and kids. And so the tension is definitely mounting and it's windy and cold and you can feel that the sea is rough, really rough. The chief engineer and the chief officer and the safety officer got off on the first lifeboat. So they were gone. Sitting there, you can see people start to get more and more um, uptight and, and the tension is definitely mounting. And it was an open boat with iron bars across the top of it. And we hung suspended for about an hour waiting to be lowered in the wind, howling, just waiting with the kids, just waiting so that to make sure that the other boats had cleared so that we could be lowered. And all of a sudden you just, it was just like released. And you remember you're in a two or three story building almost. That's how high you are on one of the bigger ships like this. And we were just smacked down into the water. And that was when the fr frightening part really started. Because once we hit the water, you've got no control. After smacking against the side of the ship once or twice more, we managed to row ourselves away. And we were just sitting in the trough of these waves, going up and down, up and down, being bashed around with winds howling. We didn't know where we were going. It was dark, it was about one o'clock in the morning. I felt responsible for them, but I felt like I was losing control. We couldn't even see over the top of the troughs of the waves. So we all just sunk to the bottom of the boat and stayed like that. And people were then being seasick. It was windy, it was cold. Um, they were whimpering and we were just trying to row. We were rowing into nothingness, into nowhere. We didn't know where we were going or what we were doing. At 4.30 in the morning, we saw the helicopters. So we thought, oh great, they're coming to rescue us. 
but the helicopters were going in a completely different direction. They were heading to the ship. We just sat there, we just we were now exhausted, tired, sick, and one just rolling around in the sea. At about five o'clock in the morning, there was a big Norwegian cargo vessel. This huge big ship loomed. So we thought, oh great, we can try and be rescued by them. Then it got worse. Instead of getting better, it got worse. Because again, as you come against the side of this vessel, we were being smacked into the vessel. And the iron bars at the top of our little wooden boat started getting flung off. The boat started to leak. The moms and kids were screaming. And we couldn't, we, there's no ways we could jump onto this tall, big ship. There's no ways you could jump off or throw kids. So we started to scream at them to go away because we were now losing our boat and we were gonna start taking on water. They did eventually move away and we moved ourselves away. The moms were crying at this point, the kids were upset. Everybody was really rattled and really, uh, now we thought we were gonna drown. Two of us were sort of looking around to see if we could see anything. And instead of seeing anybody or anything or any helicopter or anybody coming to save us, we saw some sharks. The area is notorious for sharks in South Africa. That whole Transkei coast has got white, white sharks. And so I knew if we went into the water, we'd really be in trouble. Now we were really panicking because we knew this was the third time we were going to start smacking into the side of a vessel. And when you look up, you're looking up a three to four tier building. And we were all looking up at the side and screaming at them to go away. And they were screaming down in Polish and we were screaming up at them in English and in Afrikaans or any language we could think of. And nobody was making any sense. Greek, everything was being flung around and it was chaos. Eventually, one of the sailors got a rope and swung himself into our lifeboat. By this time, we were taking in a lot of water and we still didn't know how we could get everybody up, but they were brilliant. They, had, uh, they took their crane, the crane from the side of the ship, and they swung it over the side and they attached a lobster netting to the end of the crane and they swung it down into the boat. So they would take one kid, put the kid into the lobster netting, pull him up in the net onto the side of the ship. And of course, the mother didn't want to let go. The mothers wanted to go with their kids and I wouldn't allow it. And the kids, of course, are screaming and crying, but it didn't matter at this point. And eventually we just said, please let them go. We have to do this, we're sinking. And we were all still waiting and, and just being flung around all over the boat and then they put Lorraine's granny in. This poor little 81-year-old, she was like flung into this lobster net and yanked up onto the side of the ship. And in all that time, the boat is taking on water. It was a miracle we managed to get them up. I just watched it in slow motion going, I saw the last of the deck chairs sort of going into the water and then the end of the boat going under. The people that were rescued, the ordeal wasn't over for them because half of them had left a family member on the ship and we didn't know what was happening. For the next 24 hours, nobody knew who was rescued, who was alive, who was not alive, or the moms and the kids had no idea where dad was. I survived because we had such a great team who all worked together on the Oceanus, then we all knew how to react in a crisis, but also we were very, very lucky. <laughs>